Hey everybody, uh, so first and foremost I wanted to apologize, I am getting over a cold right now, so if I sound a little nasally or a little winded, you're just going to have to bear with me. Um, but I've had a lot of people ask if I could update my video on how to create custom textures in Pixelmon uh, without replacing the existing textures that are already in game. Um, it's a lot different than it used to be in 1.12.2, so I figured I'd just update that video and explain the process to everyone who might be curious. Um, so, okay. The first thing you're going to need to do is head to reforge.gg, and you're going to need to download the 1.16.5 file over here. If you click that, it'll open up an add focus link. In the top right corner, you just need to wait five seconds, and then you can press skip, um, and that'll skip the ad and download it. Since this is a jar file and we're going to want to access the jar file, you also need a file like, or a program like uh, WinRAR or 7-Zip to be able to open up those that content. I already have the file downloaded, so I'm not going to download it again. But once you have it downloaded, uh, we have it right here on our desktop. We're going to right click, open with a WinRAR or open with 7-Zip, whatever file you have. And we need to extract some of the folders from here. So the only ones that we really care about is data and assets right here. So we're going to take these and I'm going to plop these in my Pixelmon assets folder that I have sitting right next to my jar. But you can just put them on your desktop or whatever is more convenient for you. Um, and as you can see, there are quite a lot of files in here we don't actually need all of these files so i'm going to go through and let you know which ones we need to keep and which ones we can get rid of um, the reason why you want to get rid of any unnecessary files is just to make your resource pack a little bit smaller uh, so people aren't downloading a you know a 60 megabyte or a 60 gigabyte resource pack when it's not necessary 60 megabyte rather resource pack when it's not necessary so open up that wherever you put them go into your assets folder we can completely get rid of this TCG folder. We do not need that. Go into Pixelmon, and you have all of these. We don't need any of these besides textures. We can just delete all of those. Go inside of textures, and we don't need any of these besides Pokemon down here. So we can just delete all of those. If you go inside the Pokemon folder, you'll see there's a folder for literally every single species that's currently in the mod. Let's go back, and then for data, we can get rid of all of these besides Pixelmon. Go into Pixelmon, we can get rid of all of these um, besides species, we need to keep that one. And then if you go inside the species folder, then you see there's a JSON source file for literally every species that's in the game. So replacing or making custom textures without replacing the current one is a little different now because you need both a resource pack and a data pack in order to do it. The process is relatively simple though, so I'll make sure to explain it thoroughly that way you guys don't have any problems with it. Um, so let's start with doing the resource pack. So if you go into assets, your Pixelmon, Textures, Pokemon, and then, um, like I said, it has a folder for literally every single Pokemon inside the game. What I would highly recommend doing is deleting every single file except for the ones you want to have a custom texture on. You can always access these files later. I would honestly recommend storing them in case there's any Pokemon you want to make a resource for down the line. Um, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to be deleting them all except for Ninetales because we're going to be doing a custom Ninetales texture. And I am not going to explain the process of creating a custom texture for you. There are plenty of videos out there showing how to make custom textures. Um, Happy Cloud did a really good one. I think that's probably the best one that I've seen. So I would look into that. Um, for the sake of this video, I am going to be using a Ninetales texture that my good friend Kika made. Um, it's this really nice crystal partially translucent texture. She's giving it away completely for free, um, and she does a bunch of really great textures. Here, look at some of her textures she's made. Uh, these coral textures that's on a lot of servers, um, these volcanic textures she just recently made. She don't made a whole pack of these crystalline textures and shiny variants. So if you're a server owner and you need some textures, definitely hit up Kika. She's very talented at it. So, let's just go ahead and cancel out of this real fast. Okay, 
So now we have just our nine tails. So if we go inside of here, um, the texture that we're downloading, as you can see, um, is just regular nine tails. So we're going to go nine tails, all. And you can see there's two folders. There's Lolan and there's base. For the sake of this, we're going to go base because it's a regular nine tails. It's not an Lolan one. And then we need to create a new folder here. So the name of this folder is whatever you're going to call the texture itself. So for this sake, we're just going to say crystal. And then inside the crystal folder, you can just copy and paste your texture. And if you have a custom sprite for it, which I highly recommend doing, um, put that in here as well. For the sake of simplicity, I would recommend naming the texture just texture and naming the sprite just sprite. It doesn't really matter what you name it, um, but for simplicity's sake, that's probably the best way to do it. And that's pretty much it. You're done with your resource pack. Now we got to work on our data pack. So go inside the data folder, on Pixelmon, Species, and the exact same thing, we are going to delete everything except for the Ninetales file. And then we're going to edit that Ninetales.json file. I would recommend using a program like Visual Studio Code. You could also use something like uh, Notepad++ or even just regular Notepad would be fine, but it's really hard to see the syntax and everything. Um, these changes the colors based on, you know, where it is. So I would highly recommend a program like uh, Visual, Visual Studio Code. It would help you tremendously if you make any syntax errors down the line. Um, so we can just skip all of this this is all the moves that it learns and we are going to go down to palettes down here under gender and then what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this very last one that says strike you're going to copy it and we're going to paste it in um, what we will need to do is right here you can see there's a comma under the one that says shiny we need to add another comma under the one that says strike now, um, just so that it, it follows the proper JSON syntax. And then we can literally just edit this now. So we're going to name this crystal, whatever you named your folder. And then as you can see right now, the texture points to Pixmon, 38 Ninetales, all base strike texture.png. Um, so we're going to name this because we don't want it to point to the strike folder. We want it to point to the crystal folder. We're going to name that crystal and say with the sprite crystal. And if you named your, if you change your file to anything other than texture and sprite, you're going to need to change those in here as well. That's why I said for simplicity's sake, I would recommend um, just naming it texture and sprite respectively. But if you wanted to name it something else, you're more than welcome to. You just need to make sure to change it in the data pack folder as well. Um, and that's it. So we're going to save this file. Uh, one thing to note, make sure there is no comma at the end. The very last item in any array needs to have no comma. Um, and then what I would highly recommend doing is control A to copy or select your entire code and then copy it and copy it with control C. Open up your web browser and go to jsonlint.com. And what this is, is a JSON validator. So you can paste your code in here, click validate JSON and it'll tell you if you have any errors that you need to fix. JSON files are very finicky. Um, if you have even the smallest syntax error, the entire file will not work. So it's highly recommended to validate it before you do anything else. And we can minimize out of this, we can close out of this, um, and that's it with the data. So now we need to actually make the resource pack folder and the data pack. So I already have the MC pack meta, and I will put this in the description below, but it's pretty much just this for both of them. Um, so you have pack, the pack format is gonna be six for 1.16.5, and then whatever the description that you want to show up under. So for this example, I just have custom palette resource pack. And then if we open up the data pack, it's gonna be the exact same thing. Uh, pack format six, and this one I just named custom palette data pack instead of resource pack. So. All we need to do then is we need to take that assets, we're gonna copy it, and we're going to paste it in the resource pack folder. And then we can select both of these, send to a compressed zip file, and we're gonna name this resource pack test. And we can close out of that. And then we're going to open up the data pack folder. Oops. 
let's open up this again. We're going to copy the data file now, or the data folder rather, and we're going to paste it in with the data pack. We're going to select these two, send to, compress zip, and we'll name this data pack test. All right, so let's just pop both of these on the desktop. So I'll put data pack test there, and I will put the resource pack test here. Um, this isn't necessary, it's just ease of access for me. And then let's load into Minecraft. Um, for this example, I'm just going to create a new single player world. If you already have an existing world and you want to add them, you just need to go into your percent app data percent, wherever their world file is, there should be a folder called data packs. You could just pop the data pack folder in there. Um, same thing with a server. If you're running a server, you can just put the data pack folder in your world slash data packs folder. Um, but for this example, we're just going to create a new single player world. Let's put myself in creative, uh, click data packs right here open pack folder and we are going to take the data pack and put it in there we can move this over so that way it's uh, selected like done it'll validate the selected data packs <laughs> and if there's an error it'll let you know um, but since it brought us back to this screen then we know we're good we're going to call this palettes example and we're just going to create that world Okay, uh, so now that we're in the world, just go ahead and give yourself a starter Pokemon. And then you have two, well first we should actually load the resource pack. So let's go options, resource packs, open resource pack folder. And we are going to take this uh, resource pack test folder, copy it. We're going to drop this into our resource pack folder. And let's load that over. Done. And now you have two ways of actually giving yourself this custom Pokemon. Um, if you're on a server and you're ops, you can use the Poke Editor wand. Um, additionally, there is actually a slash Poke Give command that you can use um, to give yourself a Pokemon with a custom palette now. And I'll explain that to you as well. So. Okay, so you can either slash pokey give your player name, and in this case we're doing nine tails, and we can do palette colon no space, and then the name of the texture. So in this case we'll do crystal, and as you can see at the top corner we do have a crystal nine tails now. When we look at it, look at it in the texture. It looks absolutely stunning. I don't know how Kika did it with like the partial transparency, but it looks gorgeous. Um, alternatively, if you already have the Pokemon, you just want to make it custom type on Ninetales. And then let's give ourselves the editor wand. You can just right click, click the Pokemon you want to edit. And then under palettes, just click crystal, OK to save. And then you can just send it out like normal. And that's about all there is to it. So no extra mods needed this time. You don't need to download um, NBT added like you used to. Um, but you do need to make a custom data pack. I would highly recommend looking into data packs anyways. Because it's a really cool and unique way to add custom forms to your Pokemon. Um, you can change their typings. You can change what moves they learn to level up. How fast they level up. Um, all sorts of things. So it's really, really neat. Data packs make this so much easier. Um, and you can add so much more to it. Make your servers really stand out. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, that's about it for this video. Uh, so you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye.